Seth David here with the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about QuickBooks Online Banking and Credit Card Register, a deep dive. We're going to do a deep dive on QuickBooks Online Bank Account and Credit Card Registers. I want to show you there's some things here that, um, you know, as somebody who spends a lot of time every week looking over the shoulders of people who are working in their own QuickBooks Online companies, I can see what they see, but most importantly, especially from the perspective of, you know, wanting to be an excellent teacher, I can see what people can't see. I can see what they skip over on the screen and don't even notice it's there. And a lot of times I'm be I become acutely, acutely aware of these things because as I watch them work, I notice that they miss things that I at one time missed until I noticed them. And that's kind of what I want to talk about here today. So let's take a look at my screen and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here in QuickBooks Online, if we start off at the dashboard, uh, we didn't really have to start off at the dashboard, but if I go over to accounting and then the chart of accounts, every one of these accounts on the balance sheet has a register. So if I go into the checking account and I click view register, in here I can see every single transaction from day one until now. I can sort this by date, right? And I can flip the sort order. So I can see from oldest to newest, newest to oldest. Bottom line is I can see exactly how we get to whatever the balance is. Ending balance up here is 1,201, right? We started with an opening deposit here, presumably of $5,000. Uh, and if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, we get to $1,201 based on this last transaction coming out of here. Notice also you can easily switch between accounts here. Okay, but that's not really what I want to show you. Let me go back to checking and notice any other, I can even look in undeposited funds and see what went through there. Okay, don't ever record something directly in there like that. Please, you'll make a mess, I promise. Um, so going back to the checking account, what I really want to focus on is your filter options here. This is something we often skip over. And if you scroll down too far, you can't even see it anymore. So you do have to be scrolled all the way up to the top. But oftentimes I'm looking for something, and in this sample company file, there's not that many transactions in here. But when I have years and years of data in here, this comes in really handy. Oftentimes I'm looking for something, for example, within a specific date range. Like I might want something from, you know, June of last year. So I'll just put 0601.19 to 0630.19. I have a feeling that's going to come up blank on this one. Yep. So, but I can filter something quickly for a date range like that. If I know that the transaction I'm looking for, if it is there, it would be during you know that time period. And sometimes I'll cut the month up in half and look at only half the month at a time because that gives me less to view in the register list, so to speak, right? So if I click reset, that will reset the filters and I can hit apply and now I'm back to the way I was. The other thing that's really cool that I even forget to use myself a lot of the time is if I know I'm looking for a specific amount, um, let's scroll down here and find something. So 10809. If I know the exact amount, 108.09, enter it, type the enter key on my keyboard and boom, it'll come up with anything in this whole register for that amount. And then from here, I can do everything I can do from within a register, you know, on a transaction. I can click in there to see kind of the surface level details, and I can click edit here to get into the full-fledged screen that I would have used when I, for example, originally entered this transaction, assuming I had entered it manually and not through online banking. You can also see the fact that there's no link up here. Uh, confirming that it's been matched up in online banking. that The fact that that's not there means it hasn't cleared. It hasn't matched up with anything in the online banking, right? And that brings me to another really cool use case for this, which is a lot of times I, I'll work with a client. And they'll say, hey, how come my QuickBooks online balance is so different from the bank account balance, right? They go into the bank feeds and they see even here, right? The, the checking account, according to the bank, is overdrawn by almost 4000 but QuickBooks says I've got $1,201. How do I figure out where that difference is coming from? Well, I can go into the register, and by the way, the link from the online banking area here is right there to go to that account's register. So I can use that to take me straight back in there. And what I want to do is check for anything that's not reconciled and apply it. And this is a sample file, so I wouldn't go by this in terms of the difference from the bank balance, although it might account for it. Bottom line is normally, any, if I filter for what's not reconciled, that should account for the entire difference between the QuickBooks Online 
uh, register balance and the bank account balance itself. And if you really want to analyze this from within the register, you can click this export option and it will export the register. So you can play with it in Excel, which is oftentimes just a better way or better place, I should say, to analyze data. Right up here, you can see that it's currently filtered for not reconciled. By the way, if I switch accounts, it retains that filtering. Now, sometimes that's really handy. Sometimes it really messes me up because I'll forget that I did this, leave, go out and do something else, go back into an account register, and all of a sudden nothing looks right, and it's because I forgot to reset this filter. So always remember to reset that. Let's go back to checking. And then generally speaking, and in conclusion, you can see here it's pretty straightforward. The language is right there. What you can search for in the search box or find box, the memo, the reference number, the dollar amount, you can search greater than a certain dollar amount and less than a certain dollar amount, which is really cool. You've seen the reconcile status. I can search by a particular transaction type and you can search within things. So I can say, you know, I want to see, you know, all... Uh, checks that are not reconciled and so on and so forth. I can search by payee and as you saw already I can search for a particular date range. So this is one of those areas that like I said in the beginning a lot of people gloss over it, they overlook it, they don't pay attention to it, they forget that it's there, or they just don't notice that it's there but it can be a really powerful way to uh, chisel the data down that you have and find something you're looking for, confirm if the transaction was cleared or not and many other use cases as I'm sure you can imagine. So what I suggest is if you've watched this and you're thinking, yeah, that's really cool. I need to make more use of that. Make it a point. You know, think about use cases. Make yourself just go through the exercise of using it just to play around with it, if nothing else, and search for different things. The link in the original write-up uh, to the QuickBooks Online Test Drive company is there. So if you don't want to play around with live data, doing those searches in case you're afraid to mess something up, you won't. But just in case you can use the test drive company. Um, so make sure you're watching this over on the website, all those kinds of write-up screenshots, everything I give you the resources for uh, in my website that I can't give you directly on YouTube or Vimeo or wherever else you might be catching this. So always check the description for the link to catch this over on the website and practice this. If you make it a point to practice it and play with it right away, it'll start to be ingrained in your memory so that when the next time comes up that you can really use it, you'll remember it, you'll think of it, and you're much more likely to start making this and incorporating this into your regular habits when you're looking around for data in QuickBooks Online. That, my friends, is what I've got for you today. As always, I hope you learned something here, had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.